total package. And Pastor Norman started this series and he talked about righteousness. But before he did that, he talked about identity. Everybody say identity. identity. Well, this is identity part two. All right, I need to do a test real quick. May I see your uh, writing utensil? Everybody has a pen? Or, glory. Everybody needs a pen or a pencil. And you can borrow a piece of paper. I'm not just talking for my own breath, believe me. But you need to take a note or something today. We're talking about identity. And then we just got ministered to by that song that says, I'm made in his image. Let's get started. Let's, let's go to Psalms 112, Psalms chapter 112, and we'll start at verse, we'll start at verse 1. And this may be the only thing we go over today, and then we can leave. <laughs> and then y'all can stop looking at me like. Okay. So let's enjoy this moment. Let's receive all that God has for us. Amen. This Psalms, if you're taking notes, come on, I know you are. It's about prosperity. Is for everyone in here. And he's talking about the prosperity of the righteous. That the righteous person has prosperity coming to them. It's all for the kingdom, but it's yours. Verse 1 of Psalms chapter 112, and I'm going to skip around a little bit, but he says, Praise ye the Lord. Can you put it up in the Amplified Bible, please? Praise the Lord. Everybody, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah is how this psalm starts off. But he's talking about your prosperity. This is blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who fears. The man who reveres and worships. So when the praise team is up here asking you to worship, they're saying your prosperity is on the line. Make the connection. The man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. How about you go to verse 4? Wait, verse 3. This is Miss Tanya's scripture, verse 3 declares prosperity and welfare are in his house and his prosperity and welfare faring well the goodness of God are in that man or that woman's house it says and his righteousness so there's something that accompanies this man or woman that's so prosperous is that righteousness. So the title of the series that we're now working on is called The Total Package. So what I want to talk about today, look, that total package is a complete box. It's a huge box. Jordan just walked in here with a huge box. And all I'm doing is taking one aspect, one attribute out of that box, one characteristic that is in your life or should be in your life out of that box. And it's righteousness, your identity in righteousness. Now, I want to say to you that righteousness comes from the inside out. So everybody say the inside out. Yeah, that's where it starts. It is the righteousness which is of faith. And faith is not something you can walk up to and touch and feel with your five senses and be able to see it. So this righteousness is by faith, and it's going to come from the inside out. 
It's going to manifest. So my word to you today from the Holy Spirit, this is specifically for this body of believers that have gathered here this morning. Here's the word of the Lord from the Holy Spirit. He says to us today, if you're taking notes, in quotations, stay aware. Stay aware. He says, keep having knowledge of the fact that I'm calling you to righteousness. I need you to stay aware of that. Everything you do, everything you encounter, every incident, every circumstance, every situation you run into, I need you to stay aware that I'm calling you to righteousness. Is that hard to do? Is it difficult? But the enemy is constantly bombarding Throwing things our way so that we lose consciousness of it. To be aware means to be conscious of. It means to be informed about. What does the Lord say about my people who have no knowledge? They're dis- yeah, they destroyed. He says they cut off because they have no knowledge. So the opposite is to gain knowledge, to find out everything you need to know about this so-called righteousness. It has nothing to do with being 70 or 80 years old. Your righteousness starts the moment you become aware. The moment you become aware. The moment you gain knowledge, your righteousness, watch this, or prosperity begins. The moment you become aware of your righteousness, So let's talk about that righteousness. I heard the Holy Spirit say, although I'm here talking about righteousness, you need to know it's not a lack of respect that we are displaying by claiming our righteousness. See, some people get it confused. They think because she stands there and says, I'm righteous, that that's disrespectful. No, there's none righteous. But I'm being made righteous by what God said through his word. Let's take a look at it. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Verse 21 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, Ready, everybody, read. For our sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, which we ought to be in right relationship with him by his goodness. He's doing it all by his goodness. He said, we ought to be righteous. Come on, tell your neighbor, I ought to be righteous. I'm not trying, I'm made righteous. I'm identifying with my righteousness today. I'm qualified to be righteous. You're not working to be righteous. Remember I said it comes from the inside out? It's done already. Your job is to stay aware to stay conscious of your righteousness. I'm telling you, I have said this for years, especially in soul care, that we go around on a 24-hour basis, and within those 24 hours, we will lose consciousness, stay with me, of our righteousness. Something happens that drops us out of our righteousness. But I need you to quickly move back into it. Don't stay out of your righteousness more than five seconds. Long enough to pick it back up and put it on. Be clothed in righteousness. Don't say, listen, I had a beautiful story told to me about a mama and a grandmother. And um, the grandmother is telling the story how her granddaughter says to her, Mama, I want to go with you to church and... Mama looks at the little girl and she says, well, baby, you don't have the right clothes on. 
well, well, what do I need to put on? And that moment, the grandmother got her saved. She got her saved. She held hands with her. She said, baby, you just need to accept Jesus into your heart. You need to believe that God raised him from the dead, that he was the son of God. I mean, this kid is following this testament, and she believes. And she gives her heart to Jesus, and her mama looks at her and says, now you're ready. You have the right clothes on. You're clothed in righteousness. That little girl was ready. Come on, guys. That's how righteousness happens. A righteous identity is critical to a successful life as a Christian. Yes, it is. A right a righteous identity is critical to a successful life as a Christian. And without it, you will not have the capacity to live in the fullness of life. Okay, so one of the greatest areas of demonic attack is the righteous identity of the believer. He does not want you to know you are righteous. The enemy is fully aware of your rights and privileges as a believer. And he knows that these rights and privileges are only as effective as your awareness is or your consciousness is of your righteousness. So who is the one person that does not want you to realize you've been made righteous? So he's going to fight with all of his might to keep you out of your righteousness. And so what types of attacks does he bring to keep you out of your righteousness? Doubt, fear, sickness, these are things that will come against your righteousness. Does that mean it's not there? No, it does not. When the total package is inclusive of this gift or this identity, your righteousness is established. Our identity in Christ represents both our status and our authority. If you're taking notes, our righteousness in Christ represents our status or our state of being, and it represents our authority. Now, what I'm talking to you about today is your prosperity, but it just happens to be connected with your righteousness. Yeah, I'm not going to take you to money scriptures, but I'm going to take you to righteousness scriptures. How about the New King James Version of 2 Corinthians 5.21? Because I want you to see this one aspect first of God. New King James says, for he made him, God made Jesus. You see it? He made him who knew no sin to become sin for who? That we might what? Ah. Ah. The righteousness of God. So everybody say with me, God is righteous. Let's get it straight. Say it again. God is righteous. Let's establish that first. If you're taking notes, let's establish that first. God is righteous. He's just. He's good. He's fair. He's righteous. That's what righteous means. It means just. It means justice. It means just as if you had never sinned. And we all know the truth about that. But if we can establish God's righteousness, then we can establish our righteousness. So I know righteousness seems like a a lofty kind of way out there, out of space concept, but I want you to grab a hold of loftiness today by faith and let it be tangible in your, in your life. I want righteousness to be tangible in your life. Because you know what? It takes some righteousness to get up here. 
and look back at all the faces looking at me. It takes some righteousness. Come on, say with me. I'm walking in the righteousness of God. I'm established in the righteousness of God. My identity is in the righteousness of God. God is a righteous God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Pastor Norman has often said before that we all stand here and worship and we want to tell God how much we love him. But the truth is, you need a revelation of how much he loves you. That's when things change. That's when things change, how much he loves us. And I believe it because he made me his righteousness. Come on, try it with me one more time. Say, I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous. Ooh, you said it. I got you to say it. Let's establish that in your life. I am aware of God's righteousness. Therefore, I am aware of my righteousness in Christ Jesus. Let's get it straight. Come on, everybody. I'm aware of God's righteousness. Therefore, I'm aware of my righteousness in Christ Jesus. That's so powerful. I'm aware of God's righteousness. Therefore, I'm aware of my righteousness. I'm aware of God's righteousness. Can we, like, stay there the rest of the morning? I'm aware of God's righteousness. God is a righteous God. So the first time or the next time you need some justice in your life, you'll be calling on him, Lord, where you at, Lord? I need you to be just, God, in my life. And today he's making you aware. Let's go to Romans 8. Chapter 8, verse 29. Try the NIV version, please. Lord, we are your righteous ones. Actually, he says in the book of Revelation that you will be established as trees of righteousness. Exactly what you talked about. He's weaving everything together this morning. Romans chapter 8, verse, maybe, yeah. How about verse 28? And then we'll read through to 29. Verse 28 says, We know that in all things God works for the good those who love him. Listen, somebody was trying to find that scripture. Let's help them out. You've been looking for it for a year now. We found it. It's right there. People always quote it, but they quote it religiously. But there it is. It says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. He's working it all together, those who have been called according to his purpose. All right, verse 29 says, ready, everybody, read. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be in the Lord, to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among the I'm excited. This scripture says conformed, that God wants us to be conformed to the image of his son, that we, he might be the firstborn, Jesus, and he's the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. But that word conform means to be shaped into his image and his likeness. So if God is righteous, the son is righteous, and if the son is righteous, You must be righteous. Come on, say, we're the righteous ones. Oh, look, that is going to be your weapon of defense against the enemy. I am a righteous one. I'm a righteous one. How about Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13? Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Wow. There it is. It says, therefore, my people, 
do what? Stop. My people go into captivity. People are held in bondage. Listen, people that think they're free. Oh, I do. Don't nobody tell me what to do. People that think they're free. This text says, watch it. He says they go into captivity. They are held in slavery. They're held in bondage. Listen, they are quickly and easily deceived because they don't have knowledge. And the only thing that stands between me and my being righteous, accepting my righteousness, is knowledge. You just got to know. How about... Let's all just take a moment and practice our righteous identity. Come on, tell your neighbor, give me some room. I'm about to practice my identity. Okay, 1 John chapter 2, verse 29. We're almost done. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29. Maybe the New King James. Mm-hmm. It says, little children, keep yourselves. Mm-mm. First John chapter 2, verse 29. It's on the screen right now. It's real good. Everybody ready? Read. If you know that he is right. Are you practicing righteousness? What does it mean to practice? To rehearse? To live it? To practice it? To go over and over a thing again? He said just practice. You know, he didn't say feel. He said just practice. Practice it. Just practice being righteous. I make right decisions. I make right choices. Listen, I'm I'm right. Right means just means to be straight with God. Come on. Tell your neighbor, say I'm straight. Woo! <laughs> you are definitely you're right with God. I'm straight. How about the Amplified Version? Ready? Whoa, it's a lot. Okay, we'll take our time and try to read it. Ready? Read. Do you know, proceed and Be sure righteously everybody, everybody, everyone. The scripture is telling us to just practice it. He says, Now that you know it, now that I've taught you this morning, God is righteous. Therefore, we are righteous. We're righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Lord says, practice it. Just practice being righteous. In other words, stop that stinking thinking. Stop that wrong thinking and practice being righteous. What is happening in the body of Christ if we're coming to a place today where God is taking us back to the basics so that we can keep your foot and my foot on the enemy's neck. He is defeated, but I don't even want him talking to me. Just shut up. I am the righteousness of God. Practice it. Practice it. 
look, this is not on the script. But there is a place in God where he said to Dr. Debbie, I will make it so that there will be no effects of the enemy in your life. But I'm going to make it so. I'm going to make it so. I believe God. You know why I believe it? Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 2. This is why I believe God. I believe God for his righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. This changes nothing. Titus 1 verse 2, he says, in hope of eternal life, Debbie, which God, that cannot, not, not shall not, cannot, not would not, cannot, God cannot lie. So if he promised it in his word, the Bible says before the world began. He says he's going to make it good. You just keep believing. You just keep believing. Keep believing and keep watching. He's going to make it good. And I have a question for you. Let's read Proverbs 28 and 1. Yes. This is my last portion here. Proverbs 28, verse 1. This is very significant this morning, and we're done. We're finished, but I just want to go to this little segment here. It says, the wicked flee when no man pursues them. Now think about that. Nobody's even chasing him, but he is getting out of dodge. <laughs> You don't want to live a life like that. He says, however, but the righteous are as bold. There's that boldness. This is why you need to be aware. See, people have taught us about identity, but they didn't teach us what to do with it. They taught us about righteousness, but they didn't teach us what to do with it. Today, I want to connect your righteousness, even with your awareness, your awareness that you're righteous on a daily basis, every incident, I'm just aware that I've been made the righteousness of God. My prosperity is connected to my righteousness. My boldness is connected to my righteousness. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So my question to you today is, Jordan, are you lion-like? Are you like a lion? In any way possible, do you even know the characteristics of a lion? Are you lion-like? Mr. Leon, are you lion-like? Huh? 
what? He said, that's what his name means. His name is Leon. It means lion. Any more Leons in the house? Are you lion-like? Yeah. To be lion-like means to be distinguished. We're still talking about righteous. It means to be esteemed or valued. It's high-ranking, lion-like. See, a lion shows confidence. You know that lion thinks he's the baddest thing in the jungle? That lion thinks there's nobody in the jungle that can whip him. Have you ever seen him? I've gone to Africa. I have seen the animals on the entire prairie come to a standstill when that lion shows up. Nobody moves. Everybody is praying and hoping they're not lunch. Nobody wants to be lunch for the day. I'm telling you, you, they stop their tracks. They stop their movement when that lion shows up. A lion has leadership qualities. That lion will approach any other animal in an effort to attack because he doesn't see stature. He doesn't know that that giraffe is so much taller than he is. He doesn't know that that rhino is so much stronger. But you know, a lion can only run at about 36 miles per hour, while the average animal on that plane is up to 50 miles an hour. So one of the characteristics of a lion, hold on to your neighbor, just put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. One of the characteristics of a lion, come on, do it for me, guys. Lions travel in what they call prides because they only run 36 miles an hour and the average animal runs 50. So they got to get a strategic approach to that animal and they do it as a pride. So they have to work together. So he just became your new best friend. Hello, buddy. Yeah. Come on, say, I'm lion like. I'm just like a lion. I'm bold. For real. Oh, my goodness, you're blessing me. You're blessing me. Yeah. They're not easily intimidated. Okay. One of the primary attributes of a righteous person is boldness. Boldness and courage. It goes hand in hand with righteousness. The righteous are as bold as a lion. That, that righteousness signifies boldness. So see, don't, don't put it off. Don't take it lightly. Don't diminish it. It's really a high quality of a believer. And all boldness is, is a result of your awareness of the rights and privileges associated with being righteous. Do you know that it, it is not easy to deceive a righteous man or woman? A, a righteous, I'm telling you why you want to walk in your righteousness. A righteous man or woman cannot be easily deceived. They can't be tricked. There's something about this God quality. This is directly from the Holy Spirit today, guys. Come on, say with me, I am, I am righteous. righteous. So tell the devil, there. there. I, said it. I said it. I meant it. I meant it. 
and I believe it. I'm righteous. I'm 